okay, I'm listening. Well, I think you like this very much. Once upon a time, long, long ago, in an ancient forest, on a lovely fall day, a mouse was walking along when she came upon a baby caterpillar who appeared to be all alone in the world. You poor thing. I almost stepped on you. You're a funny little thing. A little fuzzy wad of green. The mouse looked around to see if there were any other caterpillars inside, but there weren't. Being a young mouse with no children of her own, she said, Don't worry, little one. I will care for you as if you were my very own. And with that, she swooped the baby caterpillar up in her arms no, no, and carried the baby home, which was a log in the depths of the forest. Welcome to my house. Now, what can I get you to eat? Not knowing what caterpillars like to eat, she cooked all kinds of things and tried them out, hoping her new baby would like them. Here, how's this? Yum. And this? Yum, yum. And now try this. Yum, yum, yum. The baby liked everything, which made the mouse very happy, but also kept her very busy. As winter approached, and a cold winter chill came into the forest, she knitted the baby a winter hat and 12 pairs of socks for its many tiny feet. There, that should keep you nice and warm. To help pass the time, she told the caterpillar all the mouse stories she ever heard. And when she ran out of those, she began to make up her own. In the spring, there will be colors in the world again. Blues and greens and yellows and the lovely smell of flowers, like perfume. Yum! That night, she dreamt that she and the caterpillar were rolling through never-ending beds of flowers. But one morning, when spring finally arrived, the mouse awoke to find that the caterpillar was gone. Where are you? Where have you gone? She looked everywhere, but there was no caterpillar to be found. He was really and truly gone. The caterpillar had disappeared. When she got to her favorite pond, flowers were already starting to bloom. But they didn't make her happy. Nor did the blueness of the sky, nor the warmth of the sun. It's useless. Nothing will ever make me happy again. I'm too disappointed. And, not watching where she was going... Whoa! Help! Help! Hold me. Hold on. I'll be right there. I'm coming. Just a minute. Hold on. There you go. Are you all right? And after a moment of catching her breath, she told the frog all about her baby caterpillar. I loved him so much. I thought we'd spend the spring and summer together and do so many lovely things. But now he's gone, and I just know he's never coming back. Maybe he will, and maybe he won't. It's hard to say, because we don't really know the whole story. Anyway, I'd be happy to enjoy this day with you. You would? The mouse found that she was feeling a little bit better. The mouse and the frog spent many happy hours together that day, sunning themselves and reading on the lily pads, going fishing, and taking a long walk in the woods. The mouse was telling the frog one of her favorite mouse jokes when a butterfly flew overhead. Strangely enough, as it flew by, it gave out the last line of the joke. How could you know a mouse joke? You told it to me. I did not. Oh, yes, you did, when I was just a little caterpillar. Then the butterfly lazily fluttered up into the sky, leaving the mouse even more amazed. But how? Why? You knew me before I went into my cocoon. And when I came out, I was a butterfly. I'd flown to the farthest corners of the woods looking for you. Everything looks so different from way up here. I wanted to tell you that I missed you very much. Really? All this time I thought you'd forgotten me. Oh no, I could never do that. Hearing this, the mouse was happier than she could say. The frog, she now realized, had been right all along. She had been sad and disappointed because she didn't know the whole story. The butterfly flitted off, as butterflies will do, but he returned often. In fact, the mouse, the butterfly, and the frog 
Though they would often go their separate ways, spent many happy summer days together, and they remained friends for the rest of their lives. So you see, Gladys, sometimes life presents you with a riddle. And do you know the answer to a riddle right away? Well, no, I have to think about riddles. Well, of course you do. Well, the way your friends are acting today, that's kind of a riddle. Like when the caterpillar disappeared. That was a riddle for the mouse. Exactly. You don't know the whole story yet. <laughs> You'll need to be patient and let some time go by before the riddle can be solved. Can you be patient, Gladys? Well, I guess so. Maybe there's a good reason they're all being so weird. Thanks, Mr. Growl. Thanks for everything. Uh, okay. Uh, Molly? Yeah? I have a secret to tell you. What? Well, this is my very first birthday party. I've never been to a birthday party before. You've never been to a birthday party? Wow. Well, you know, it's hard to make friends when you travel all over the world. And, well, nobody invites you to things like birthday parties. So, well, what exactly happens at a birthday party? Oh, birthday parties are so cool. Well, let's see. There's lots of food and games and birthday cake with yummy icing on it. And then they put candles on the birthday cake and you blow out the candles. <coughs> like that. And then everybody sings happy birthday. Oh, but I don't know the words to happy birthday. Oh, well, that's easy because Duck, he's going to play it on guitar. And then we'll just sing along. And that's it? You just eat cake and sing? Well, you play games and you listen to music. Oh, wow. That sounds like so much fun. Well, of course it's fun, silly. It's a birthday party. Well, you know, I hope Gladys likes my present. Oh, she's going to like it. Hope she likes mine. Hmm. I wonder if she's home. I'm going to go check. Okay. You know, I really think this needs more green. <gasps> there she is! We better go right now. Okay. Hello, Mr. Growl. Hey, Mr. Growl. Hello, Molly. Hello, Rosa. You've done a very good job of fooling Gladys. Oh. Maybe too good, even. <laughs> really? We really fooled her? Oh, yes, indeed. She thinks everyone has forgotten her birthday. Oh, goody, that's so good. She'll be really surprised. Yeah. Hey, Molly, I want to go out back and blow up balloons, okay? Oh, good, good idea. Yeah, blow up lots of different colors. We'll be out in a minute. Too long. Oh, Mr. Quill, um, I need you to get the birthday card for Gladys. I'm going to make a big pile. Oh, where is my card? Hmm. Hmm. I remember thinking I must put this in a place where Gladys won't see it if she happens to come by. Good thinking. Yeah, that was the good thinking. The other part of it is that I decided on such a good hiding place that I can't remember where I put it. Oh, oh let me think. Oh, I remember. I remember. Ah, here it is, right where I put it. <laughs> Next to my favorite book, How to Remember Everything. Oh, well, hurry, Mr. Well. I still have to get Gladys. Oh, <laughs> she's really going to be surprised. Shocked is a better word. Oh, wow! <gasps> it looks great! Molly! Hello, Molly! Hi! Mr. Growl! Hey, why, you've done a great job with those balloons! Oh, boy! Gladys is gonna be so surprised! Oh, I'm gonna go get Gladys right now, so shh, everybody be very quiet! I'll be right back! Okay, Molly. Okay, Molly. See you. Oh, look at this cupcake. Gladys! Oh, Gladys! Gladys, are you home? Gladys! Doesn't sound like she's home. Maybe she went away. Oh, this is terrible. She's going to miss her own birthday. I hear something. It's footsteps. Shh. Everybody hide. Shh.
Maybe she felt bad. Why would she feel bad? Maybe she thought we didn't like her anymore. Why would she think that? We've been doing nothing but planning her party all week. Yeah, but Gladys doesn't know that. She was left out. Is 